And this is a presentation uh, about the collection uh, of domestic biodegradable waste in Piran. Um, actually, I should stop this and show you what Piran is. I've been asked by um, these two ladies, Sandra Loboda and Milica Maslo, uh, from the company if I could give this presentation. They prepared the presentation but couldn't actually come today. And since I know what they are doing, I promise that I will do that. I would just like to show you, if I'll manage, uh, to show you uh, Piran, since um, they modestly did not put even a picture of Piran in there. i just like for those of you that are not from Slovenia, show what Piran is. Piran is this uh, small medieval town uh, on our coast, on the Adriatic here, northern Adriatic. This is the town that you will find uh, on all Slovenian tourist brochures, uh, materials, and so on. It's actually a very nice, picturesque city. Uh, medieval, very small. Uh, medieval, but you can see that it's very dense. It has those typical small, uh, the narrow, possibly also steep streets. So you have to collect waste in this little area. That's what Okolia Piran is doing. They are a municipal uh, waste management company. Okay, let's get back here now. So you have an idea what I'm talking about. Um, so you have the task of collecting waste in that area and also in the whole municipality. There's some uh, information here about the uh, enterprise, so Okolia Piran. Uh, this is non-profit, uh, uh, public service, uh, waste management company. 60 years old. Uh, Piran is relatively small, 45 square kilometers. Um, uh, it has, it's a tourist destination, uh, a serious tourist destination, so during summer uh, it will be full of tourists. Uh, you probably know the next town, which is even more touristy in, in the sense that it has more hotels. That's Porto Roche, that's uh, just next by. Um, but Piran itself, the, the city itself, has a very high density of population, about 6,000 people per square uh, kilometer, whereas the rest is, is much lower. Uh, um, it also, the municipality also has some rural areas where, of course, the density population is much lower. Uh, the density population is particularly important uh, because you have a lot of uh, collecting points. So it's 117 collecting points per square kilometer. This affects, of course, waste uh, collection. Uh, Okolia Piran collects all types of waste, so mixed municipal waste, separately collected fractions that go for recycling paper, packaging glass. Packaging contains plastics, since we're discussing plastics. Uh, and of course, biodegradable waste, so bio waste, and hazardous waste, and, and then those, those typical categories that are smaller, less frequently collected, like large pieces and so on. So it's a, it's a normal waste management uh, company. If we look at biodegradable waste, uh, what it contains, of course, green waste, some uh, fractions of paper, some fractions of textiles, uh, very important kitchen waste, kitchen, uh, so biodegradable kitchen waste from households, also from schools and so on, but we'll not discuss that. Uh, biodegradable waste by itself has some potentially negative effects. Uh, if it decomposes uh, uh, freely by itself without proper control, it will release greenhouse gases. Uh, CO2, if it's aerobic, of course, if it goes into the landfill, you're starting to produce methane, which is a much worse uh, greenhouse gas, uh, so about 20 times uh, worse than CO2, so you're starting to uh, make damage at that point. Uh, if you don't take it out and do something else with it. Uh, also, it creates organic acids which, which can cause corrosion of metals and so on and also pollute groundwater. It also, of course, uh, while it degrades, it um, 
uh, contributes to leaching. So of course the burden of collected uh, uh, leach leachates, so water coming from the waste, is much higher. So it's very burdened with organic material and then of course you have to have a water treatment plant and so on. So there are some, some consequences of not uh, separately collecting bio-waste and just letting it go into the landfill. Uh, okay. Biodegradable kitchen waste, I think we're all fairly familiar with what that is. Uh, normally you would not put uh, meat in there, that's normally excluded and I see here we don't see it as well. Um, not for any other reason than, uh, than, than the, the treatment of the waste has to be more careful and goes under veterinary um, control. Still meat, meat and bones and such stuff uh, does go into the waste. Also people don't like to collect meat because it starts rotting and smells and so on. Uh, biodegradable kitchen waste has two key problems for the users. Uh, number one, it's very wet, so it leaches. It, it leaks water or liquids. So if you have it in, in your kitchen, it will slowly start uh, uh, giving this liquid out. And it has a bad smell. If you keep it, let's say, for a couple of days, depending on what it is, uh, it, it might become uh, uh, annoying to have the bad smell. Also you can have organisms, um, let's say flies, insects, uh, worms uh, that, that start growing in it. Uh, depends of course how long you have this waste uh, sitting there and of course what the conditions are. In the middle of summer it's completely different than uh, in the middle of winter. So. How, do, uh, how does Okulia Piran collect the waste? Well, one uh, approach that's used is to use 10 liter biodegradable bags, so biodegradable plastic bags, and each, they have a unique system in our country. They are the only municipal uh, waste management company that uses biodegradable plastic waste, distributes it to all its inhabitants, uh, and that is how they collect bio waste. They're the only ones to do that. That's why we are presenting uh, their case here. Uh, so each household receives 12, 12 bags per month and the distribution is every four months. They get them for free. If they run out of the bags, they can then apply uh, to the company and they will get them on demand. So it's not that you use 12 bags and you have a big family or I don't know, you use a lot of uh, fresh vegetables and so on. When you run out of them, you can get more. You have to though go and get them. Uh, this bag is ideally then used in a basket with perforations. This is, a, this is the best method how to collect organic waste. Why? Because uh, these bags based on uh, starch blends actually breathe quite well, uh, water or vapor can go through the bag and this way uh, you are losing uh, water through the bag and you allow it to go out. So, so while it's sitting there on the counter or somewhere, it's, it's slowly drying. So you're avoiding the leaking uh, problem that way as well. How they started doing this? They started in 2006 they delivered uh, the baskets, these perforated baskets and the bags, they started doing that uh, and this was collected three times a week uh, door to door in the town center of Piran. So 2000 households, 2006, okay. 2007 they extended this to uh, several villages around the city. Uh, Outside the city center, it's done in such a way that they have uh, containers, these large brown uh, containers for bio-waste and the inhabitants are asked to collect in their kitchens the waste in the bags and then bring the bags and put them into these containers. Okay, that's, that's how they organize it and they uh, remove the waste once a week uh, door to door uh, for some households. 2009 they also extended it uh, 
uh, with these collection containers. So I think right now they are, they are covering the whole uh, municipality already with this service. How this actually looks, this is what they refer to when they say ecological island. This is a place that's publicly accessible 24 hours a day where you have the different collection bins. So this would be for bio waste. This is, I think, paper uh, or paper packaging and glass. So this is just an example. This is one size. They can also be bigger uh, because they have 120 or 240 liter uh, containers. Then the other mode of collection is from individual houses door to door, smaller containers. And in the city of Piran, the actual center, is door to door collecting the 10 liter basket. So people put their basket with bio waste uh, on the street. They have a two hour period uh, in which this waste is collected. They have to put it out at that time. It's collected and uh, th that's that. The collection days differ uh, during the seasons, during summer, because as I said, this is very touristy. They want to keep it clean. Uh, they collect every day, two hours every day. You can put it out, it's collected. Uh, off season, it goes three times per week. So they know which days and what hours it's collected. Okay? So it's their responsibility to put it out so it will be collected. Uh, there are 164 of these ecological islands. So one ecological island per 102 uh, inhabitants. Uh, there is door-to-door -door collection in the historic city center, but also in the rural areas where the population density is low. So they have two sections of the, the whole market that they collect door-to-door, because -door, it doesn't make sense to do any other method. So this is where the ecological islands are, the uh, distribution. So built up areas, houses, blocks uh, of flats, 60 individual houses, 86. Uh, in town center, uh, uh, fewer. And that's the whole number. I think this is the uh, most interesting part. Uh, this is a uh, statistical record of how much waste was collected. So they started collecting um, organic waste or bio waste in 2006 and that year they collected 20 tons okay so we go on and we have a growth by 2013 to 430 tons so this is times 20 or a little bit more even uh, bio waste is represented down here by this curve the lowest one so from effectively zero from 20 tons uh, up to 430. You see there's a growth and as they were extending this um, coverage and the way they covered their territory, it's growing all the time. Um, something that's particularly interesting is that it continues to grow. You can notice here from 2012 to 2013 a reduction in other waste categories. So paper, for example, went down uh, packaging a little bit down, glass down, uh, bio waste still going up. Okay, so that, that shows that they are still collecting more uh, material. I think this was a 7% increase. And this, despite the option that they gave to their uh, inhabitants, that they can opt to avoid participating in the bio waste collection if they use their own composting at home. So if you have a garden and you have composting there, you can opt in Piran not to uh, participate in the collection of bio waste. Your bill, your monthly bill for waste collection will be somewhat lower. And they had 800 uh, households decide to do that, but still the collected uh, uh, quantities we're growing. So you can see that there's still potential for growth here. And I think this is uh, pretty good statistics, to be honest. 
There are some problems with uh, bio-waste collection. Uh, one is tourism, because when you have tourists uh, walk around drinking water and, I don't know, eating something and whatnot, creating waste, uh, they will not look for the container for this or that type of waste. They are very unlikely to separate waste. They will put it into whatever container they come across. So you will get, during the summer season, uh, much more uh, waste in bins where it should not be, including, for example, just mixed normal waste in bio containers. So that's something that's a bit of a problem. Um, certain percentage of people are still not separating. Um, it's very hard to get everybody to participate. This can also be seasonal because there's a, a choice, let's say, during summer when it's hot that people really don't want to have bio-waste in their kitchens. Uh, it smells, it attracts insects and so on. So, for example, you will have people that during summer will choose not to participate and the rest of the year they might participate. Uh, the worst results are obtained in large apartment buildings. Okay, why? Because nobody knows who actually did it. If you have your own individual house, it's very clear you did not separate or you threw the waste in the wrong container. If you have a large apartment building with, I don't know, 20 apartments, who did it? I don't know, the neighbor did it. They're really bad guys. Uh, so, so you get the worst uh, results in this situation. Uh, sometimes they also uh, switch from the biodegradable bags to normal bags when they run out of them. Um, they run out of them, it's understandable, but still they have the option to get more, but they have to go to the, to the waste company and ask for them. But today, people are quite busy and it's inconvenient, so you just take a bag and you throw it in. It looks pretty much the same. It's not green, uh, but otherwise it feels about the same. So these are some of the problems with the bio-waste collection. Uh, just looking at the use of biodegradable plastic bags, uh, uh, I, I had a long discussion with uh, the two authors of this presentation just today uh, about they're feeling what are in fact the benefits or the results of using these bags. And there's a, there's a very practical point that is much appreciated by the people. These are plastic bags, so they don't leak. If you use paper bags, they will get wet and soon enough you will have a little puddle of, of some liquid underneath it. They will leak, they will then start tearing and so on. That's a problem with paper bags. Plastic bags don't do that. Even biodegradable plastic bags do not do that. And people like that. So they're much more likely then to collect the waste in these bags when you give it to them. Of course, when you give it to them, it's for free, so they will use them. That's, that's something that the company decided for. Uh, it, there's, a, there's a firm belief, actually, that the biodegradable plastic bags offered in this way for free are contributing or, or a major contribution to the better collect, collection results. So to the better results of collecting bio waste. Uh, they compare the results to that of neighboring uh, municipalities where this is not a practice and the results are much better and you could see the trend is just going up and it's still improving. So they are convinced that this is uh, largely the result of using biodegradable bags. I would just mention that uh, from studies uh, done in Italy, Italy has a very good tradition and history of collecting bio-waste in biodegradable bags. Not not, of course, uh, disconnected from the fact that they have one of the largest bio, uh, bioplastics producers in Italy. But still, their results and studies have shown consistently that the use of biodegradable plastic bags for biowaste collection will result in better quality of the separated biowaste. Uh, 
and and uh, uh, so it, so it's pretty much the same thing as here. So using these bags will normally uh, induce better behavior by the inhabitants. Uh, there's a cost, of course. Uh, this is the only municipality that is buying these bags and giving them out for free in effectively unlimited quantities to their inhabitants. This costs them approximately 35,000 euros per year. Uh, some waste management companies, when they hear this uh, number, they just say, oh my god, this is terrible. But I, I um, had a discussion, where are the savings? Well, their savings are that they avoid landfilling charges of 135 euro per ton for all bio-waste. And if they collect more bio-waste, and if it's of higher quality, of course, you, you're avoiding this charge. If you just calculate the 430 tons times 135 euro, you get to 58,000 euro. So the, the landfilling charges that they're avoiding by the collection of bio-waste is effectively, uh, well, one and a half or somewhat like that, or well, I don't know what the ratio is, but it's higher than the cost that they have for the bags. And they're willing to accept this cost. Their uh, uh, goal is to make the collection convenient for their inhabitants so that they would participate in the schemes. That's their approach. So as you can see from 2006, they are doing this and they are continuing to do it uh, and there's no, no intention to change that. So here you have an idea also how uh, one can uh, accept the cost, the additional cost that you have with biodegradable plastics. Okay? Because that's normally a question. Oh my God, it's so uh, uh, expensive. It's an added cost. But you always have to look, with this added cost, will I have added savings somewhere in the system? Or added uh, results, better results, or something like that. That's what you have to always ask. Not just focus only on the cost. Okay? You have to look at the other side. So in summary, uh, the, the quantities of separately collected waste have been increasing year after year. Uh, and this is in part because of the ecological islands and separate collection uh, from uh, door to door. The quantity of biodegradable kitchen waste has uh, increased more than 20-fold, going from 2006 to 2013. I'm sorry for the mistake here. Uh, and it's expected that this will grow further on. The users are well aware of the importance of separate collection waste. Uh, of course, they're not aware just, just like that by themselves, but of course of promotional uh, activities done by the municipality and the municipal waste management company. Uh, this is not mentioned here, but of course that's, that's in the background of this. Uh, <clears throat> and there's a firm uh, belief that users would not separately collect biodegradable kitchen waste, at least not in the same extent, if it weren't for the freely provided biodegradable plastic bags. Uh, but that is uh, part of the policy of the company. Uh, this brings me to the end. Here you have a, a picture of the situation that you have in the city center. You see narrow streets. Um, you can do something with special vehicles, uh, but even that sometimes fails and then you have to go with a cart you just need a couple of steps and this, this fails, you know. <laughs> uh, and, a, and a view of Piran. So, I would finish with that and thank you.